I'm thinking again about dualism, and uh, I'm thinking about this because I have to talk about dualism at a conference in a few weeks' time, uh, and I think I know what I'm going to say, but I'm just kicking ideas around, really. But one of the things I'm thinking about now is um, is how dualism might be kind of reinterpreted, or how my, I might reinterpret dualism for my own purposes. Uh, because I think traditional understandings of dualism, uh, those ones that are given it a kind of bad name, the metaphysical understandings of it, uh, are ones that come out of substance dualism, which distinguish between, you know, what used to be soul and body, or what used to be, um, yeah, that that kind of language, and which now might be called something like body and mind, or brain and mind even, or in some cases maybe even just brain and consciousness. There's a sense in which one of those terms is uh, is, uh, is given a kind of metaphysical status as, as, as different stuff, and even when we know it's not true, it's still kind of we still talk as if it feels like that, and I guess it does feel like that. Uh, and there's some evidence, as I've said before, that 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 kind of phenomenal dualism is is just part of human default settings, really. We seem to come into the world, as Paul Bloom says, natural born dualists. Um, so I'm just thinking what, clearly the, um, that uh, sort of extended, unextended matter-spirit kind of um, duality is, is, is not very useful, is untenable. Uh, so what kind of alternatives have we got? And the one I'm thinking about right, right now is a, a distinction between uh, persistence and ephemerality, persistence and ephemerality, and I'm thinking mainly in terms of mental activity and cognition, um, yeah, the conscious and non-conscious processes that go on in our psyche, which are constantly putting ourselves in the world, constantly giving ourselves the sense that we are the center of our own experiences, constantly claiming a, a subject just subjectivity for ourselves, constantly setting up relationships of subject object to entities outside of ourselves and indeed with the contents of our own thoughts. So we seem to be able to distance ourselves from our own ideas. All those kind of uh, practices are ultimately dualist. So what's the so is there a kind of persistent and ephemerality dualism which can if not account for that then at least can give it some kind of um, material logic. I mean, certainly, ephemerality is absolutely part of human experience. Uh, I read somewhere that every single cell in our body, every single molecule in our body, uh, is kind of replaced every seven years or so. This constant flow of food and substances through our bodies. A hair falls out, or fingernails are constantly growing and being clipped, skin cells constantly shedding all over the place, uh, blood cells being replaced by the million every day, uh, lining of our gut changing every few hours. So there's lots and lots of um, change, which I think I've described before as a kind of fountain, so we have this constant uh, material flow through us, but also um, the contents of our consciousness is constantly changing. Uh, I'm trying to keep a steady train of thought going, but uh, I'm aware that my thoughts are flickering across all sorts of different things, like a monkey jumping around in there. Uh, so there's no, con there's no consistency, there's no persistence, uh, other than the one I'm striving and failing to catch in my thoughts. And presumably all the non-conscious processes are going on, most of the non-conscious processes are going on are similar. Um, as I'm walking across this field, the uh, the impact of the ground on the soles of my feet is changing on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. The uh, the uh, balance uh, sensors in my body and the, the sensors in my joints are constantly providing slightly different information, keeping me upright. But that moment-to-moment -moment information is changing. The sounds that are coming through my ears, so all the sensory information or most of the sensory information that I'm engaged, with, engaged in relation to is changing. That's all ephemeral. So, 
So most all things change, all things must pass, whatever, that kind of stuff. But uh, but some things clearly aren't. And here I think I'm looking at uh, Antonio de Masio a little bit here. And I'm looking at Thomas Metzinger here a bit. Uh, and one or two other people I can't put names to right now. And what, uh, what's claimed in some of that writing is a, is a, a kind of embodied notion of persistence to do with body image, to do with a kind of phenomenal um, interior body model. It's something like that that Metzinger calls I can't quite remember the exact name. But uh, what he talks about in there, which I think also features in uh, other writings to do with image schemas and to do with body schemas, is that whilst there's all these changes going on and we're constantly in a, a state of flux, some things don't change, or change, or the change is so incremental and so small that it may as well not be changed at all. So Damasio, I think, talks about it in terms of the, um, well, almost the bodily fluids, I think he's talking about, the kinds of uh, biochemical information that's being sent to our brain from, the, from our gut and from our, uh, the various glands and, and organs of our body. It's, it's constantly sending this information, which is modulating slightly according to what we interpret as our emotional state. But, uh, but there's a constant kind of I'm still alive signal going on now. I'm still alive, the blood is still flowing signal going on. A kind of carrier frequency against which the modulations of that are measured. Uh, I think Metzinger or somebody else, it's not Metzinger actually, Metzinger cites this other idea which is related to that but it's to do with proprioception which is what I said a minute ago to do with uh, our sense of balance, the sense of um, where our arms and legs are in space, all our spatial orientation but, uh, but in amongst that kind of sea of quite complex information there is a regularity, there is a regular pattern for that. And again, that pattern is constantly being sent forward, sent up to the brain, if you like. I'm still here, still here, still here, still here. There's a very str um, strong, persistent center to that, um, apparently, wandering self-concept. So I guess what I'm just looking at there is, is there a, is there a way of reinterpreting du dualism not in terms of some two mysterious substances, which we might characterize as brain and mind, or body and soul, or consciousness and matter, or soma and psyche, one of those kind of dualisms. Is it uh, interesting and useful to think in terms of a persistence and ephemerality dualism? That we are, in, in that sense, the still center of our own turning world. Uh, like I am the still center of this uh, field.